a $200,000 a year subsidy, not including Medicare or welfare. This is in Canada, $200,000 a year at taxpayer expense for each family. It's shocking that Canadian Armed Forces personnel will be ordered to abandon the coalition battle against ISIS and return to Canada to become waiters, chauffeurs and social workers for Muslim migrants. And that Canadian Forces bases will be turned into squalid refugee camps. So they're actually taking the military bases in Canada and filling them with these migrants at taxpayer expense. We'll be back after the break, try to reconnect with Tommy Robinson and go to a couple of your calls. This is The Alex Jones Show Live, Infowars.com. Stay right there. And we have Tommy Robinson back on the line. Tommy, just before we lost you, I was asking you about this uh, clip that Channel 4 posted of this guy who was actually attacked in his own home by these migrants, but again, still defends them. We've got feminists in Cologne handing out roses. We've got rape victims keeping quiet about their ordeal so as not to make the migrants look bad. And we've got this entire industry, which is based around, you know, censoring criticism of what is the most intolerant belief system on the planet. Why have so-called liberals abandoned liberal principles by defending the intolerance of Islam? Because it's easy to do so. Um, it's easy. What's not easy is to do what we do. Uh, what's not easy is to criticise Islam and tell the truth about Islam because you get violently attacked, um, you lose your job, you lose your career, and currently the, the, the free speech market in the UK is governed by the far left, and they decide what is what is and what isn't allowed to be, to be said. Um, I had an interesting day today. I, I spent a day with a, a German girl who is doing her masters, and she's travelled over to interview me, and she said she was brought up in a very left wing family. <coughs> um, and she's doing a thesis on, on, on Pegida. And she said that everything that Pegida is saying, she said she finds her own mother, who was very left. She said, now her own mother is saying it, but she still would never say she would never support, support groups like Pegida because of the mainstream media perception of them. So not because of the views, because everything they're saying mirrors what her own mother, it mirrors exactly what she was saying. She said that they put a refugee centre asylum seeker at the end of her road and they're now scared she's scared and this was someone that this was a complete left-wing liberal who would have been wanting to bring refugees in similar to the lady that taught her son who was 10 years old who's just been um anally raped in a swimming pool changing room um her, his mum also was a was welcoming to refugees and i don't really know what it's going to take we've seen the, the, the things that we've seen already in europe You'd think the whole of Europe would be exploding and taken to the streets with the devastation that they're seeing happening. And it's like an invading army is coming into your country and raping your women, and the men are just standing there. And that, 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 that's most certainly how it looks within, within Sweden especially. But um, I don't see these problems getting any better. If we look to France, where we've, we've just seen at the weekend the retired army general... Um, who has been arrested there. He's been arrested for attending an anti-Islam rally. So there was going to be a rally for Pegida in Calais. Now, this is France, and this is the, 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 the thing that we say, the more Islam, the less freedom. In France, they're still under a state of emergency from the Paris attacks. This is the country that gave the Statue of Liberty to America. This is the country that prides itself on liberty and freedom. And here they are, banning, banning their own citizens from having democratic assemb free assemblies, banning them. They're not allowed to come out on the street. They're not allowed to protest. So that's how, how, how far France has already gone. They've lost their democratic rights. They've lost their freedom of assembly. And that's just a sign of the future times, where the government will force you. Even if you want to have a say, the government will take that say, that take your right to say anything away from you, as we've just seen in France. And um, I don't know, I think that there's going to be a, a, an acceleration of developments this coming year across Europe, and um, it's, although it's not going to be pretty. Well, I mean, we've had numerous major army chiefs and, you know, police experts over the past few months come out, and in France, indeed, they've got the army, this came out in the Telegraph, preparing for the reappropriation of national territory because they think these ghetto Muslim communities, you know, France is about, what, 7% Muslim now, are going to rise up, are going to be radicalised and armed, and they're going to violently try to take territory in these major cities in France. We saw it with the, 
the Paris riots back in 2005. But, and again, this, the, the, the sheer hypocrisy of it, and it is a kind of Stockholm syndrome. It's like if they, if they align with their abusers, it's kind of easier to swallow. They don't have to face up to the problem. So it's kind of a mass Stockholm syndrome that we see going on with the left. Um, and they also share this grievance culture with Islamists, which I think is why they, they identify with Islamists so much, these extreme leftists, because they hate the West. Just like the Islamists, they hate the West. They and they're, you know, they're just like Islamists, they're racist generally against white people. So they actually share these regressive uh, anti-Western beliefs, which is why they're aligning, correct? Um, yeah, they're aligning. They, they, they see it as the best option to overthrow rule of law and democracy. They see it as the best option. But, but, let's, look, but let's not kid ourselves, they despise religion as well. So it, it's like a loose alliance, a very loose alliance, um, where they, they're both using each other. They're both using each other, but the left should learn from what happened in Lebanon. The, the first people that will be turned up will be them, but, but from the Muslims, where, if they're ever successful. But I think that we should just learn from history that what you just said about the put them pocket in their own community and wishing to separate their own community, that is exactly what's going to happen. We know it's going to happen. Um, OK, we'll be back after the break with Tommy Robinson going to a couple of your calls as well. This is the Alex Jones Show live in Robinson. Your calls in a minute. First, I want to direct you to InfoWarsStore.com because the all-new Pro Pure shower filter has arrived. This is the Pro Max four-stage shower filter. Reduces and removes over 200 contaminants from shower water, including heavy metals, VOCs, pesticides, fluoride, chlorine, pharmaceuticals, and odors. It's BPA-free plastic, easy to install, has a filtration capacity of up to nine months. And it's important to support us because we don't get pharmaceutical dollars in the hundreds of millions um, from big corporations. We're not funded by George Soros. We're funded by you buying the products, which pays for our reporters to go out in the field and challenge the mainstream media. And the mainstream media needs to be challenged on this migrant issue because, Tommy, we've seen this whole thing being characterized by this overwhelming cover up. The former head of uh, ZDF, the top broadcaster in Germany, came out last week and said, we report what the government tells us what to report, to please Merkel. We're not allowed to say anything negative about the refugees. And we've seen this in other European countries as well. There's this coordinated effort to cover up this migrant rape scandal. God only knows what you know hasn't been reported. I'm getting told stuff privately, which is just as bad, if not worse. But you appeared on Al Jazeera um, a couple of days ago, I think, and they censored an entire segment from your interview. Tell us what happened. So, yeah, I was asked on Al Jazeera, and I, have a, I, I use an app now called Periscope. So when I'm talking to journalists or doing an interview, I stream it live so people can watch. Uh, if, I, if I think there could be anything suspect, suspect about the interview. Now, when I went on this interview, what, what the, his name was Peter Dobby. He used to be in the UK. He used to work for the BBC. He obviously took a big money paycheck and gone out to Qatar in Doha, <coughs> Doha in Qatar. And he's asking me questions. But what he says is, he says, I've got the Quran in front of me. I'm reading from the Quran. He said, I'm going to read you some chapters now from the Holy Book. And then he reads out some verses about stoning women to death and men and women to death, etc. And he says, what, what's the first thing you think when you hear this? Yeah? Now, I knew straight away. I, I said, you're reading from the Old Testament. But he obviously was trying to trick me where he must, must have thought I was stupid. So I said, you're reading from the Old Testament. What, what, what are you even trying to do? Uh, and, then, uh, and then I asked him if he'd read the Quran himself. So he said, yes. And I said, OK, you're sitting in, you're sitting in Qatar. And bear in mind, I, I know that the punishment for blasphemy or for insulting the prophet or even apostasy is death in Qatar. So, so I said, um, are you allowed to sit there freely and criticise the prophet Muhammad? And he said, yes, I am. And then, so I continued then and said, well, look, Mohammed murdered 600 people. He was a rapist. He was a thief. He um, took a young girl who was six years old and he raped her when she was nine, called Aisha. And then when it actually went out on TV, everything I said about Mohammed was cut out. So when I sat and watched it, the, whole, the rest of the show was all completely included. And I also took the opportunity, seeing, I said, seeing as I was talking to the Arab world, and um, the Arab leaders, I took the opportunity to tell them that we don't want their oil money or their blood money in our country, because the problem is that they are buying their way through our country. I was sitting in the... The, the building I was sitting in was the Shard, 
Now, the Shard was built on, on apartheid rules where no Israeli company could go in. I said, so I was sitting in there and I said, you're trying to talk to me about immigration. No one with Israeli passports allowed into the country you're in. I said, you, you're also, you want to talk about fascism or extremism. I said, the country you're in and the people who pay your paycheck actually fund extremism and terrorism worldwide. They fund Hamas. I said, and here you are. To get into the building, what surprised me most was to get into the building of the Shards, I had to go for an airport-style security where I had to take my belt off, my shoes off. I had to take everything off. And when I asked why, they said, because of the Paris attacks. I said, but the Paris attacks come from the, the formation and the spread of money that your country and Saudi Arabia are funneling into Europe to Islamify and, uh, and radicalise Wahhabi Salafist mindset in, 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 in my country. So, um, but when it, when it went out, obviously, they're getting a lot of flat now because he sat there and said, yes, you can criticise Mohammed, and then they cut everything I said about Mohammed out. Which, and uh, we've posted the clip on InfoWars. People can go and see it. Probably won't have time to play it now. But you can see the part where they cut out, and basically you're talking about, you know, Mohammed marrying and then raping a nine-year-old girl. That's what they didn't want their audience to hear because it's all about media censorship. The Old Testament thing, he's reading from the Old Testament expecting you to fall for that. The point is nobody's acting on anything that's in the Old Testament. People aren't beheading people. People aren't throwing gays off buildings. People aren't carrying out terror attacks because of anything they read in the Old Testament. They are from stuff they read in the Quran, which is we had the story the other day out of Copenhagen. They, the police there hid for the fact for a year that the, the, the guy who attacked the cultural center during the freedom of speech event had a gold-plated Quran opened, bookmarked at the page where it said, you know, kill the disbelievers. They sat on that for a year. Those are the people acting out, not people who read the Old Testament. That's a completely debunked argument. <laughs> but we're going to go to some of these calls now because we're running out of time for Tommy Robinson. Charles in Ohio, you're on the air with a question for Tommy. Go ahead, Charles. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Um, I just want to say, Mr. Robinson, you're a huge inspiration to me. And um, I'm just a local guy, and I'm trying to make a difference here in Ohio. Um, I started a blog site, social media accounts. I'm doing everything I can to get the word out there and make a difference. Um, my question is, what did you do, and what can I do to, to be seen and be heard and make a difference before it's too late? Thank you. So what I did, and I'm just an ordinary guy as well. I'm just an ordinary guy. For this town. What, I, what I did was get out on the street. And by getting out on the street, it made it impossible for them to ignore. What I found is that when I left the English Defence League, there was a two-year period there where they just pretty much started to ignore things again, and they wouldn't talk about them. What we saw this weekend by holding mass demonstrations across the globe um, with Pegida, as far away as Australia, 12, 13 countries in Europe held rallies, it was a talking point. It brought the debate into people's faces. It was on radio stations, it was on the news, it was in papers. Um, and that's what we need to do. We need to get out there and we need to make sure people know the truth. They need to understand the agenda of Islam. And one thing that's really shocked me is the amount of Muslims that I'm meeting and debating with who don't know anything really about their own religion. They say, yes, I'm a Muslim, and I've sat there and told them things about Muhammad. And they said, did he really do that? I said, yes, he did. And I said, look, this is what the man done. And, and, and I, I think the biggest job we have is, is to expose the truth about Mohammed. That's what I want to do anyway, is expose the people. Because six, seven years ago in the UK, people were, were unaware that Mohammed killed anyone. They were unaware that he was a rapist, unaware that he tortured people, unaware of all these things. But we just take it for granted that Islam is like Christianity and, and Mohammed must have been like Jesus. But um, the biggest thing is just getting the truth out there and, and sticking to your guns and saying truth to what you, truth to what you believe in. But, um, it would be great to see a mass movement of, of people out on the street in, in America as well, and in Canada, and, and across the world, at, at, at a unified time. Because by doing it at a unified time, it, it makes it impossible for the media to ignore, because it's part of something big. But, yeah, we've got, we've got some difficult times ahead in America. You're in a situation, or, and Canada, all those countries are in a situation where they should be looking and learning. They should be looking at art where, where we've messed up. And stop it. So I can't believe in the Republic of Ireland. That's another country that can that can actually stop it. They, you've got the ability to prevent what's happening. But I just don't know if there's the will of the, the will of the leadership of the country to stop it. 
Okay, Charles, thanks for the call. I mean, that's what it's about. It's about demolishing this narrative that Islam is a religion of peace. 